It is not possible, but if it was possible. Let us suppose that someone brought a dead bird back to life in front of our eyes. We would be so shocked and would deny what our eyes saw. We would not be able to forget this incident until we died. Nevertheless, the truth of the bestowal of life is a reality that is just as fascinating and perplexing. However, this incident, which would perplex us and cause us to disclaim what we saw and would be something that we could never forget, is actually nothing but a dead bird being brought back to life in front of our eyes. Which one is more astonishing? Resurrecting a dead bird or having living birds come out of dead eggs? Is bringing a dead bird back to life more perplexing or creating life forms that come into existence through water droplets? Is resurrecting a dead bird back to life more strange or the creation of trees and plants from dead seeds and dead germs? Why do we not accredit this perplexity and amazement to God? God arranges resurrections that are far more amazing in front of our eyes all the time. For example, we see in front of our eyes that life springs from various materials and that the earth is overflowing with life forms. Creatures that are created from eggs, germs, seeds. And water drops called sperm are living beings and a portion of these living beings have a soul. It is unthinkable that non-living beings could provide life for another. In that case, the life that appears in front of our eyes could only have resulted from God, who is Hai, ever-living, and Koyum self-subsisting sustainer of all, creating them. It means that one of the greatest proofs of God's existence is His right to give life. We now ask the person who dares to refute God's presence, who is the one who creates and makes life forms sprout from simple substances like eggs, seeds, germs, and water droplets? Who besides God could create them wisely? Have we ever thought of what was necessary to continue this life, which is beautiful and pleasant in every way? Undoubtedly, thousands of factors must come together. If there is too much or too little of something, it could result in the paralysis of life. For example, the smallest disruption in the balance of heat or cold could eliminate everything. The temperature is to be set in a way so that living beings will be able to continue living. When the temperature rises to 60 degrees Celsius, then the life forms will face the risk of death. The arranging of the atmosphere in a way that is suitable to life is another important condition. The possibility of finding the gases in their current states together in one place is too small for calculating in numbers. 
The gases have specific escape velocities, just like a bird in a cage. The balance will be disrupted if there is a decrease or increase in these velocities. However, the velocity that pressures the gases to escape is aligned with the gravity that holds them in the atmosphere in such a way that having them escape and spread is not in question. Water is also essential for life. The sources of water are the oceans and seas. In our world, 16 million tons of water evaporates per second and every year 505 million tons of water evaporates and dissipates in four directions through winds. The water is taken to places that are in need of water and then it evaporates again and rises to the sky so that life can continue. 300,000 sextillion calories are necessary for the water to evaporate. If we substituted coal in this example, then Turkey would be in need of a 4.1016 amount of coal, and the Turkish economy would require hundreds of trillions of dollars. If we were to put all of life's conditions to one side, And if all factors possessed efficiency and volition, then would their powers be enough to adjust the temperature, the atmosphere, and the water supply? <laughs>